Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back my dear friends, students and many of you may be faculty members, uh, hope everybody is fine and enjoying this course. My, I am Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department at Kanpur, India. So as you know, this is the 33rd half an hour session uh, or the 33rd lecture for this project management program under the NPTEL MOOC series. So, we were discussing about different type of project control techniques and if you remember in the 30th, 31st and the 32nd class, we did discuss in quite detail going through very slowly that how the crashing of the jobs can be done and how different um, uh, marginal rates of de decrease. That means, as the number of days decreases, how the cost increases, those were considered and how non-linear costs were not considered. So, we considered only linear cost and we considered that how crashing could be done, how the inter interdependence of the activities and the jobs would help us in trying to add up the variances for all the activities along the critical path and uh, also help us in trying to find out the variance of the critical path, the standard deviations. Then we also considered um, that given the due dates, what, what was the probability to find out that certain percentage of the jobs were finished. Uh, then we also found out that given two due dates, how we could find out that what was the probability of finishing say for example, 70 percent of the job or what was the portion of the job which would be finished between two due dates D1 and D2. We also uh, consider that how we can calculate that given a certain percentage, what was the due date by which we were certain to finish that po proportion of the job, considering that due date was an important factor. Then we also did discuss um, uh, that the crashing of jobs uh, can also have the component of fixed costs, the variable costs. In, in the later example, even though the, I went a little bit fast there considering that I, we had spent a lot of time in the first example that each and every jobs and activities were uh, crashed considering one unit decrease in the number of days and how the cost increased on the other hand the time decreased. And then we, we also mentioned uh, uh, at the end of the 32nd class that we will consider the JERT and QJERT, we will do that. So, but from a very simplistic point of view and in the later part, last fag end of the course, we will try to basically go through one or two simple problems. So, some of the slides which we will be doing now may be a little bit repetition, but please bear with me because this has to do with, with a huge amount of accumulated in concepts which we have learned and how they can be actually utilized in the real sense. So, we were going through the concept of the S curves and also if you remember we did discuss um, before we did the crashing of the jobs the concept of resource balancing, resource allocation, trying to find out uh, the resource utilization for the amount of resources exceeding more than the, the, the maximum value which was basically R, capital R. I am just referring to the diagram which we, we discussed and uh, also trying to find out that what was the under utilization considering the resources utilization was less than small r and if balancing has to be done, what was the concept and how the early start, late start, early finish, late finish concept can be considered that where the resource balancing could be done. So, again um, uh, coming to the fact of the S curve, I will repeat that and then continuing considering the different type of concept of earned value management and how the so called concept of expected value, not in the sense what we mean by expected value if you remember the decision trees, 
uh, we will consider those concepts, the variance concepts, the ratios, not the financial, financial ratios, just the ratios in a very simple way when you have the earned value concept uh, coming to the picture. So, the bottom line is simply evaluating a project status according to its performance on time versus budget expenditure may easily lead us in making inaccurate assumptions that what is the budget and how we are spending. Say for example, the budget may be 100 crores, but if you have already spent a huge amount of that trying to fin finish few uh, initial activities, which means that as days go by, the overall cost for the whole project would increase, because we may be happy that the work is going on very fine, but you have to basically balance that fact that the time duration decreasing has been due to the case that the resources utilization has been more than the average. So, we have to basically make a balance according to that and take decisions accordingly. If obviously, the deadlines are sacrosanct or if breaking the deadlines means a huge penalty, we are uh, at a disposition to take decisions such that trying to utilize resources or trying to hire resources from vendors from outside sources may be feasible considering the cost benefit analysis which we are as a project man manager trying to take. So, in short, because S curves only link time to budget. So, if you remember the X curves uh, and if you go to the, the, the last set of slides in the 30 second class. So, we had the cost component whether cumulative or whether individual cost component that does not matter. It can be on from the point of view of resources also because resources can be uh, converted into the concept of cost. And along the x axis, we have the time of uh, uh, the concept of time being uh, measured um, such that we can draw the curves accordingly. So, uh, continuing the discussions, which is the second bullet point here, in short, because s curves only link time to budget expenditure, we have no way of knowing the true status of the project. So, must use dollars spent as a surrogate. So, as I was mentioning, the resources utilization has to be converted into the concept of some dollars, some yuan, some rupees, some pound, some dirham, some uh, uh, Canadian dollar, some pesos, whatever it is. Based on that, we try to analyze that with respect to the time, what is the, the utilization of amount of money. So, now if you remember just few minutes back, I mentioned that amount of money being spent is very high would make us very happy that we are able to finish the act set of activities well before time, but uh, a comparison with the budgetary allocation would actually give us the real picture how things are going. So, what we need is means to determine how the project is actually doing besides just how much money has been spent. So, we will try to analyze two important fact. One is time, one is resources converted into some monetary value with respect to what should be the time and what should be the resources utilization. So, trying to gain time, that means gain time in the sense trying to finish up the work before time for each and every steps we, as we proceed with the job may, may, may be valuable provided the resource allocation have not been um, compromised. Compromise in the sense we are not trying to utilize more than the resources or Try not trying to basically use too much resources or too lesser resources with the view that the work schedule is basically getting hampered would also have a detrimental effect. So, a uh, balance has to be made. We need a way to access assessing the value of the project uh, which is has generated till date or till a certain time period of time and take a stock of the situation. So, we we'll, what we do is that as we as we proceed we take the decision. And if you remember that when we initially started of trying to analyze the activity on arc and activity on node concept, we did mention there would be some decision gates. So, those decision gates can be utilized in this uh, perspective also. And if you remember, we did that during the so solution of two different flavor of problems for the decision trees. One, one was basically the moped problem, one was basically the oil rig problem. So, we will try to basically analyze and see that how the work is going on with respect to the different due dates and the different resources allocation. Now, on value management EVM is basically a method of trying to assess the overall utilization of the resources 
with respect to time. So, how you utilize the resources on a macro level or a micro level or have the concept of the resources converted into money and then try to analyze per unit utilization. So, they can be worked on on, on a very detailed basis as that we understand how the utilization is going on with respect to the project. So, the following obviously, I will come to the explanation of the key points later on. So, it is more qualitative discussion and it will give you a feel that whatever we have discussed under utility, under expected of the utility, under the certainty concept of utility, under the expected value in the decision tree analysis, if you remember, under the different types of financial concept which we did the return on investment or say for example, the IRR on or on the fixed interest rate or on the floating interest rate and all these things would basically make sense when you are trying to go through the following concepts which we will just now cover. So, the following are the key concepts that allow us to calculate the earned value and use its figures to make future pro project performance projections and, and evaluate them with respect to what we want and how things are going. So, the, the six bullet points are plan value which is PV, the earned value which is EV, third one is actual cost of work performed is AC. So, I am just using the short form AC for actual cost. Then the schedule performance index which is SPI, uh, then the cost performance index which is CPI and the budgeted cost at completion with respect to on the cost over overflow or underflow, underflow and overflow means you have a fixed budget whether you have basically exceeded that or you are below that. So, let me read it and, and try to explain it in very simple words such that when you go through the different type of books, again I am referring the set of books or the references which were discussed in the first class as we, we started the project management they are quite good books which will give you a very holistic picture of trying to understand how project management can be tackled, can be learned both from the quantitative as well as the qualitative point of view. So, obviously, it would mean that if you know some techniques, then trying to analyze them from the actual experience would really make sense. But only knowing the techniques is not the, the actual goal or only trying to analyze the problem from a very qualitative field would not also serve the purpose. So, you have to basically make a balance accordingly such that you understand the overall concept and try to utilize some tech, uh, mathematical texting, techniques in order to understand or translate those, those concepts into real sense such that they make some, some meaning for both for you and your project team. So, the plan value means this is a cost estimate of the budgeted resources schedule across the project life cycle. So, which basically a cumulative baseline. So, you have basically as you remember if, 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 if you can recall that in the 32nd class I mentioned about the concept of cumulative cost which was in some way even though not directly, but some way related to the concept of cumulative distribution function which means that the overall sum of the probabilities was 0 to 1. So, what you have is the overall budgetary cons constraints for the cost. So, if it is limited between say for example, 100 to 100 uh, crores to 150 crores, we know that whether the cost increase is actually does justified or not justified considering that how the per day cost or utilization for the project is going on. The earned value means this is the real budgeted cost or value of the work that has actually been performed till date or till a certain time. So, say for example, you had planned to utilize 100 crores till say for example, end of 3 months and if you see the earned value with respect to the what was the completion of the job is not 100 crores, but is more than 100 crores say for example, 125 crores then you will basically take a decision whether those extra 25 crores which you have utilized actually were plan, uh, were out of control or they were the overall so called effect from the env environment was such that you had to spend them. In case if it was not uh, then obviously, it would mean that you have basically made some wrong judgment based on the calculations which were basically given to you. So, it was not realistic. So, you will again go back to the drawing board try to analyze the problem and then proceed. The actual cost of the work performance it basically is the cumulative total cost incurred in accomplishing the various project work packages or the overall project. 
So, the third one is that if you compare with the first one, first one is basically the budgeted cumulative cost and the third bullet point is the actual cost on, on a cumulative basis. So, at the end of the day, what you will try to analyze is that, uh, that what is the overall cost spent for the whole project with respect to the overall budget which you had sanctioned for yourself. And if you want to basically analyze the per day, per week, per month or per unit time utilization of the cost, you will basically go along the x axis which is the time and trying to basically analyze that what is the total cost for that particular period of time. Now, the schedule performance index and the cost performance index are some sort of ratios. So, if you if you remember which I did mention uh, as we started this uh, 33rd lecture, that the return of equity was one concept or the concept which we use as an efficiency or the concept of trying to find out the ratios of the expected value to the variance or the ratio of variance to expected value, whichever you, you think is the right way of trying to analyze a decision or trying to analyze uh, a project as you pro proceed. So, those are basically a some sort of efficiency of the system, which is also being reflected in these two key important concepts, which is the schedule performance index and the cost performance index. So, you basically have an index based on that you take a decision that how your project is going. Now, if you go back to one of the important concepts, uh, that concept would not make much sense from the point of view of, of the earned value of the project, but what I am trying to uh, highlight is that they are some sort of index based on which you can find out that how your work is going on. Now, if you remember we had done some very briefly though the concept of the how simulation can be utilized and how we can use the criticality index based on which we can say that say for example, job or activity B would come in the critical path say for example, 30 number of times which means that if we basically simulate the total set of activities to find out the overall path, then that job or that particular activity would be coming 30 percent number of times in the number of simulations we do. So, this base basically gives you some sort of efficiency. So, the schedule performance index which is basically the ratio of earned value to planned value basically means the earned value to date divided by the planned value of the work scheduled is that ratio what we are discussing. So, this values allows us to calculate the projected, projected schedule of the project to completion and based on which we can understand that how it is proceeding. So, if you consider the earned value and, and the planned value, if they are of the same value or the same level of, of utilization of resources and obviously, you would understand that ratio which we just discussed which is the schedule performance index would give you how the work is going on based on the budgetary as well as the actual utilization of the resources. The cost performance index which is basically the earned value divided by the actual cumulative cost of the work performed to date which, which is EV which is the second bullet point here which is there on the slide divided by the third bullet point which is the actual cost of the work performed. This value allows us to calculate the projected budget to completion based on which we can basically take a decision. So, these are in some way two different ratios which give, give us an idea that how the work is going on a theoretical sense and a practical sense based on which you can understand from the ratio perspective as I mentioned that what is the difference or what is the gap based on which you should take some corrective actions. And the budgeted cost at completion base, it means that it represents the total budget of a project such that you can take a decision whether you have exceeded or not exceeded the budget either at the end point or at different initial points as you proceed with the work. So, if you see this graph, so this graph gives you as I mentioned the the time time is basically calculated along the x axis and along the y axis i am trying to find out what is the work volume or the resource allocation what is the total cost whatever it is that is the matrix based on which you will take a decision now you have basically a three different curves two are dotted and one and one is basically bold so i'll try to now mark them accordingly such that it is clear so, this actual one which is the dotted one here small dots are there, the earned one is basically hash dots. So, the dots are much bigger in length 
and the bold one is basically the planned one. So, what, what you are actually trying to find out is that you will basically have the actual and the plan in front of you, which I will now mark with the highlighter. So, this actual one and the plan one. So, actually you are planned something by based on which you, you are trying to basically get the benefit of the work as it proceeds and you basically see it on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. And you will try to basically compare with your planned concept um, the, the day you started out the project. So, this would basically give you if there is any gap and if the gap is actually really justifiable. So, what you do is that you find out the total amount of resource deviations at any point of time. So, resource deviations would basically be given the by the, the deviations on the number of projects which is happening plus considering the, what is the unit cost for each project or each activity which is there so, or, or the delay which is happening. If you remember in the resource constraint problem which we solved, which, which was very simple, again I am mentioning it, but I am sure as I went through it very slowly, it would definitely have given all the candidates on the participants a very good feel that how you can tackle those problems to any depth which you want, considering the concepts are clear. Now, the earned value and, and if you compare the earned value, the projected, uh, the actual value and the planned val uh, values, values in hint here it is basically work value, but I, as I mentioned it can be total cost or the cost or the manpowers, whatever it is. So, this amount or the different values which you have, which is the volume deviations and the resource deviations would give you an idea that put two point important points that which of the activities are deviating without going into day, day and then days. So, which of the activities are deviating? then you will basically understand that what is the amount of deviations or the amount of delays or amount of actually uh, finishing of a particular activity more than its, its, uh, its actual utilization time or it may be possible on a positive note that you have been able to finish a particular job before its completion time. So, that is important which are the activities. Number two, you will also try to analyze that what is the marginal cost increase, increase and decrease if, as you are able to finish that work either before time or after time. And also you will try to understand that what is the actual resource allocation which has been utilized on a negative or a positive basis. Negative means that you have not utilized those resources or, or positive means you have basically been able to utilize the resources more than the actual budgeted or the planned one. Then you will come to basically the marginal rates and the number of days the deviations are, because marginal rates would give you an idea that what is the per unit time utilization of the resources and what is the cost. But if the number of days is very high, then obviously the total cost for the deviations for that particular activity of job would be very high. So, basically you have to balance or try to find out in a very practical sense that what is the total number of days of delays both positive and negative. I am using the word positive or negative to imply that whether you have overshooted your time or you have not overshooted your time for the for completing that particular job or an activity. Point number one and point number two is that you will also find out that if you do not overshoot your time obviously you should get some benefit as I mentioned that if you are able to deliver the pro, uh, project or the product beforehand obviously you should get some benefit and in case if you deliver the product after the deadline there is a penalty. So, this penalty which is negative cost and, um, and, and benefit which is a positive cost for you, positive means you get gain some uh, profit. So, those should be considered in such a way that you actually understand that what is the balance happening or what is the difference happening between the actual and the planned total cost which you have in front of me. Again, I am saying the earned value project diagram which is given here, time is definitely along the x axis, but along the y axis it can be the total cost, it can be cumulative cost, it can be resource allocation utilization, it can be work volume, whatever it is based on which you can take a decision that what are the variables based on which you are trying to find out the overall feedback for the earned value project concept which we just discussed in the last slide. Now, continuing with the earned value discussion, again we come into the, the realm of trying to analyze the overall slippage which may can have occur. So, so again uh, whenever I, I try to discuss a problem or try to basically give you a qualitative feel, 
I always try to give both the positive and the benefit um, things such, such that it will at least give you a flavor that there may be cases where you are not able to meet the deadline, there would may be cases we are where you are able to meet the deadline beforehand. So, obviously, you should understand that do not making it as per the norms which is laid down in the project concept or trying to meet that deadline before as laid down in the, the project concept would basically have two different consequences point one and point number two it should also be mentioned that the overall cost and benefit analysis which you have for overshooting or undershooting a particular project overshooting means trying to basically take more number of days undershooting is that basically you are trying to use less number of days may not have the same consequences. So, I will try to basically give you from very very simple point of view considering utility analysis even though it may not immediately make sense, but I am sure people will understand or appreciate the, the way I am trying to basically put this example. Consider that um, a person is very risk averse, uh, uh, that risk averse person would definitely give you a, give a much better feel that how I am trying to analyze the, the issue and the person in one case loses 100 rupees or 1000 rupees and in another case basically gains 1000 rupees or 100 rupees whatever it is. Now, the net worth is basically 100 rupees is basically 100 rupee note in Indian rupees it can be 100 euros in Europe it can be US dollars whatever it is. Now, when you convert that in the actual utility the actual person is getting then the net utility of losing or gaining that 100 rupees or 100 euros may be different for the same person. That means, I may be much sad in, try, in when I see that I lose 1000 rupees, then my overall uh, actual happiness which I would get in trying to win a 1000 rupees. So, 1000 rupees losing and 1000 rupees gaining would have different consequence in my overall utility function. So, that those should also be analyzed in a very practical sense when you are trying to find out the different type of concept which I mentioned under the earned value project concept. So, in the un, un, under the earned value uh, project concept what you have in front of us in this slide the bold one is basically the actual value of the project which is PV as I mentioned in the last or last slide and the value of AC is basically the dotted lines which you have. And and any positive or negative value would basically be considered as a slippage which would be positive or negative depending on how you are trying to uh, view the overall cost benefit analysis for the project. Now, I will again as I mentioned that I did I did go through the earned value management concept um, with only the bullet points, but now I will basically stress those bullet points even though it may be a repetition, but please bear with me. So, the earned value man management concept is that it is commonly used method for of performance measurement. It integrates project scope, cost, schedule measures to help the project management team as assess the measure project performance and progress. So, measure and how it is going on and try to basically analyze the project which is there. It is a project management technique that requires the formation of an integrated baseline against which performance can be measured for the duration of the project. The principles of EVM can be applied to all projects in any industry and based on that we can get both a qualitative as well as quantitative feel how the work is going on. EVM develops and monitors three key dimensions for each work packages and control accounts such that it is able to analyze the overall projects from the cost benefit analysis. So, if you remember I did mention the plan value. So, again, again I repeat that and a little bit more detail. So, the slides would basically explain that in detail, but I have already discussed what we did about few minutes back. In the authorized budget assigned, it is basically authorized budget assigned to the work to become accomplished from an activity or a work background structure component. So, you break down the work going to the micro level and then try to analyze. It includes the detailed authorized work plus the budget for such authorized work allocated by phase over the life of the project. So, basically as I mentioned you de de uh, derive the, uh, the, um, the decision making points which you have or try to analyze the decision making points, then go into the depth try to analyze on the micro level and then either go backward and cumulatively find what is, what is the overall planned value for the project or the group of projects or the group of activities which you have. 
The total of the plan value is sometimes referred to as the performance measure baseline. So, that is the baseline based on which you, you analyze your project whether it is going good or bad. And the total va plan value of the project is also known as the budget at completion line so that you are able to take your decisions accordingly. So, with this uh, I will close this 33rd uh, session of the lecture, but uh, with a note that we are still to finish the detailed discussion of the concept of earned value management concept and try to wrap it up in the 34th class or else start the, the, the JOT and QJOT in such a way that in the 34th class we are able to balance that accordingly. Have a nice day and thank you very much.